Hi, I'm Dr. Gwen Irwin, and welcome back to Healing for Your Life. I'm doing a series right now on organizing for the creative process. It has five domains. We've covered the first three of them, the last being time management. Today, we're going to be doing energy management. Most people think of time management kind of in a bubble. It's just all about time. But energy management is equally or more important than time management. I'm going to try to show you how and what to do with it. So the goal is to have your energies marshaled in sync and available to you for the creative work that you want to do. We don't just have one kind of energy, which is physical energy, where you are rested and restored. We also have mental energy where we can think productively. And we have emotional energy where we are emotionally present. So the goal is to be in a state of, of health. And that health is a rested and restored physical energy where we can think productively and where we can be fully present emotionally and creatively. That's our ideal. Now, to get to that ideal is a little bit of a challenge, but it's not impossible, and it's something you can actually master. You have to understand your natural rhythms. Now, this involves tracking your energies. So, I'm going to give you an exercise. It takes a week, and I want you to map your energy rhythms for one week, Monday through Sunday. Now, you don't have to do it every minute. You do need to do morning, afternoon, and evening at least, but you also could break it down into two-hour blocks if you want to. Dep I don't know what your life looks like, so you've got to kind of customize this so that it works with your life. If you're at the office all day, that doesn't mean you're just going to do a sweep of all day at the office from you know, 9 to 5 because your energy will ebb and flow during that day. So for one week, I want you to keep a log. How you wake up, what kind of state you wake up in, in terms of your physical energy, your mental energy, and your emotional energy. Track all three things. What happens is you get ready for the day and get your family ready for the day if you have one. How are you when you get to work? How are you after you've worked two or three hours? What happens at lunch? What happens after lunch? Do you even take a lunch? What is early afternoon like? What is later afternoon like? What is the dinner hour like? What is the evening like? And then how are you before you go to sleep? Those are the basic areas you want to track for physical energy, emotional energy, and mental energy. Now, after a week, you're going to see patterns. You're going to see Boy, my best time of the day is about a half an hour after I wake up until lunch. And then after lunch, I may get a little sleepy, so I kind of have to watch what I eat. And then at 4 o'clock, I'm ready for a power nap. And in the evening, by 7 or 8 o'clock, I can't do anything more in terms of work or creativity. I just want to be with my family watch some TV, relax, and go to bed. You may be a person who says, I have to get up every morning at 6. I absolutely hate it. I go to my job. It takes me until 11 or 12 to really feel like I'm plugged in. But boy, come 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, I'm ready to go until midnight or 2 in the morning. So if I followed my natural body clock and my mental energy clock, I would probably be up until midnight or 1 o'clock every night, and I would sleep in until 9 or 10. That would be my ideal. That's how my husband and I lived before we had children, <laughs> but that's a long time ago, and since then I've never lived that way. But you adapt. 
Um, and now I'm really pretty good in the morning and my ebbing time of my energy is in the later afternoon. So once you know what your natural rhythms are, one of the first questions you wanna ask yourself is are they in sync with each other? Or do I have high physical energy, but I'm not thinking very well? Or I'm very present, but I'm really physically tired? Or I can't think creatively right now, but I can think very linearly and I can do some left brain processing. You want to see how much of the time you're in sync and, and how much and when you're at odds. Now, the reason that that's important is that you're going to organize your energy and creative work around your peaks and valleys as much as you have the independence to do. Obviously, if you're at work and you have job requirements, you have to pay attention to those, but even then, you have to take care of yourself in such a way that you can fulfill those requirements. But once you really know your rhythms, you will know, for instance, on a Sunday, if I get up and I read the paper, I'm kind of a done duck for the rest of the day. It somehow enervates me. And so I use reading as a reward for later in the day. But I get up and I get involved in my creative projects and I can work six to 10 hours without blinking an eye and I'm full of energy and then I can relax in the evening. But if I start out the day that way, the day goes through my fingers like sand. So you have to know that about yourself and plan accordingly. So you're going to map once a week. I use Sunday evenings for a weekly review and I map out, I look at my calendar, yes, for all my appointments, make sure all of that's organized. But I'm looking for two things in my coming up week. Well, I'm looking at the last week to see if there's anything I can learn from it. Um, any mistakes I made that I wanna do differently or any things that went really well that I wanna repeat. But I'm also going to look ahead for two things. I'm going to look for requirements that are not scheduled appointments. These are the things on a project or a task or a set of tasks or relationships that I need to accomplish that coming week. And then I'm going to look for opportunities. Now the opportunities may not have anything to do with the requirements. The opportunities may be your discretionary creative endeavors. And that's your chance to work on things that you have a love for and plan accordingly. And matching the requirements and the opportunities with your energies is going to give you exponential creative energy and you will become so much more productive than if you're just kind of slogging through the day. Know that the greater your energy demand, your output demand, the greater your need to be organized and prepared for those demands. A lot of people just push down the gas pedal and keep on going. I've done it myself. Sometimes that's just what life requires. But you pay a price. You pay a price physically. You pay a price for your nervous system and your stress levels, your cortisol and adrenaline. And you pay a price for what your mind and imagination can do with what little energy is left at the end of that way of living. So it's not a way of life. It is kind of an emergency time when you have no other way to fulfill. So it's like being in labor. I mean, you can't leave and you just have to get through it. So there are those moments, but you want them to be moments in life. You don't want those to be your regular routine. Now in the previous video, I talked a little bit about decision making to make the choices that are so vital for us in terms of our creative time and energies. I'm going to give you a process that I use for making pretty significant decisions or choices. So the first thing I do 
is that I think only about myself. And I don't mean that in a selfish way. I mean, I take myself into account. What are the elements of this decision? What is it going to require of me? Where are the opportunities in it? What do I need? What do I want? And I think about that until I'm clear on all of those aspects. Then I take the other people into account that are involved in that potential decision. And I think about what do they need? What do they want? What are their requirements? What are the things I need to pay attention to for them? And I bring those in to stand next to the things I know and am clear about with myself. And then I weigh them back and forth. Does this mean more to me than I think it means to them? Then I hope will lean in my direction. Is this something that's really much more important to them than it is to me? I'm going to lean in their direction. If it is equally important, is there some way both of us can get part of what we need and want and help each other in achieving that? And if it doesn't matter, you toss a coin. What do you want to eat tonight? I don't know. Hot, cold, Chinese, Japanese, Indian, Italian. I don't care. Okay, here's a place. This looks interesting. We want to try something new. Let's go there. No, let's go to what's familiar. Let's go there. That's fine too. So you want to have a decision-making process that involves you and the other person in equal weight in terms of what you consider. And then when you understand the weight of how important that decision is, that's the direction that you lean on, lean into. That's how I make pretty significant decisions. It's also how I make many choices. Now, I want to talk about energy drains because there are very real energy drains that will literally sap the energy right out of us, no matter how well we've planned and no matter how good our intentions are. One of the worst, maybe at the top of the list, is procrastinating. And procrastinating usually occurs because of a sense of dread. So some degree of dread. You want to figure out, do I dread it because I'm afraid I fa I'll fail? Do I dread it because I'm not good at it? Do I dread it because I'm afraid I might succeed? Will somebody be mad at me? Will somebody be envious of me? I'm too tired. I don't have enough energy. Whatever the reasons are, you want to try to get to things on time and fully present because that will improve your life exponentially. The next is clutter. Now, some people love chaos and they function seemingly well in it. I think that's adaptive. I don't think that's actually what supports our creative energy. That doesn't mean that everything has to be neat as a pin and not a speck of dust on anything. I could dust my office three times a day. It's still going to look dusty. It's just amazing. I think it comes in through the vents. But you don't, you want to be able to find what you need. So the organization and the order in your life, especially when it comes to your creativity, you want it accessible and retrievable. Self-sabotage is certainly one of the biggest energy drains there is. And that comes from listening to all the tapes that are playing in your head. Who do I think I am? I'm no good at this. I don't have anything to offer. I'm not bright enough. I'm not young enough. I'm not old enough. I'm not fat enough. I'm not thin enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. And for heaven's sakes, do not compare yourself to social media. It will take every bit of creative energy and just suck it out of you. Routine complaining where all you do is moan and groan and complain and whine. That is really something to grapple with. 
because nobody likes it, nobody wants to be around it, and there's nothing satisfying about it. It just makes you unhappy. So find something to celebrate, no matter how small it is, in whatever your experience is, and build on that. Too little sleep, non-nutritive food, lack of pleasure is all going to lead to creative drains. But so is not being creative. So is just having lots of dreams and not doing anything about them. Get involved and be present and show up. Accommodating at your own expense, accommodating to others, either you're a people pleaser or you have to take care of this, 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 and this before you get to your own things is just writing a check for doom. So at least balance it out. You can do for others while you also do for yourself. One doesn't have to be at the expense of the other. Gossip is something that nobody should engage in. It is poisonous from beginning to end. There is nothing redemptive about it, excepting that it gets attention on social media. And I love social media. There is a place for it. There is a use for it. It can be very creative, hence this YouTube channel of mine. So I appreciate all of it. But again, it's proportion and amount and time and the choices that you make. So now let's end with creative nutrients. Brief complaining and venting is a very good thing. And you want to have a best friend like I have, who's my producer, Jen's mother, Jane, who is just the best friend anybody could have. And we can vent, we can complain, and then we just go have a heck of a good time with one another. And we can share really anything. I haven't found anything we can't talk about, anything we can't understand, anything that we can't enjoy together, cry about together, have deep conversations about. A deep friend, an intimate partner, an extended family, warm relationship with your children. All of those allow for brief complaining and venting and then get on with living a creative life. Planning and following through are what is going to organize your life for the creative process. You have to plan, you have to follow through. Don't wait for the muse to strike. She may be on strike or he may be on strike. Inspiration is wonderful. I appreciate it. It is much more likely to arrive when you use dedication and showing up. Collaborative and reciprocal relationships are invaluable for the creative process. Order and ease support it. The joy of going at your own pace is completely restorative. Sharing in deep and trustworthy conversations is soul renewing. Mutual support for creativity enriches everybody involved. Contact with loved ones at a distance so that you don't feel the distance nearly as much. FaceTime is great. Skyping is great. Phone calls are great as well as visits. Good sleep, brief naps, nutritive, colorful, flavorful food. Joy in simple things is one of my favorite ways of renewal. I can sit outside at twilight with a breeze blowing against my face and feel like I've been on a 10 day vacation. So make sure that you enjoy very simple things. I remember when my little girl was about 15 months old and I was sitting on the front steps and she was out on the walkway and by the grass and she was finding things and then just toddling over to me and showing them to me a pill bug a dandelion a blade of grass and it was about 4:30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon my husband came home from work walked up the pathway and he said you look utterly happy and I was simple simple things and last but not least daring, daring to be creative, 
take those chances, embrace your energies, understand them, and take really good calculated risks. You don't have to jump off a cliff. Have a net underneath you, but take the chance. You have no idea the joys that may come from that. I'll see you next time. Thanks.